Okay, so we're now at the point where we want to cool our wart, which is still at just a little two, under 212 degrees. So what I'm going to do is place this inside of it, um, which has been sanitized, by the way. Remember, we need to sanitize everything. This goes inside the wart chiller. You can hear the water coming out of here already because that copper is uh, pushing that water out. So I'm going to plug this in, get that pump going, and we're going to see how well this uh, how well this works. Seems to be doing good so far. It's taking a little while to get the water through the hose here. Ooh, that is hot stuff, man. That is really hot coming out of there. This ice is going to melt in no time. Just keep an eye on it. It's already down to 190 degrees. Um, some people move it around, others don't. Uh, just one word of caution. Be careful if you uh, hold on to the hot tube, which is this one over here. So be aware that if you start to move it around, you don't grab the hot one because you're talking a very, uh, um, very high temperature here. So this is the cold one. So uh, this is just pushing the water through. It's dripping out this side, and this tube is very hot. And this ice bath seems to be working pretty well. So um, I'm just going to let this run for a little while, see how it does, and um, I'll check back with you in, in about a minute or two. That, uh, that temperature is really dropping fast, so it won't be much longer from here. Well, I tried my, uh, my chiller here with the pump and the ice, and it worked really well. Um, the only thing is I ran out of ice and it, it melted. So I had to resort to hooking this up to my garden hose and finishing off the chill that way. So it's getting there. It's at about 100 degrees. It went from about 200 degrees down to 100 in about 12 minutes using the ice um, bath. Um, I only got three bags of ice and that water was so hot it melted so fast. So I went with the garden hose and I'm going to go the rest of the uh, way with that. Um, so I'll come back when um, we uh, put it to the fermenter and that's when we pitch the yeast and uh, put it away for storage. So we'll be back. Okay, so the end is near. Here's my wart. It's been chilled down to about 75 degrees from 212 degrees. I had to switch to my garden hose because I'd ran out of ice for my little chiller machine. Whatever. Anyway, so I took the wart chiller out. This is a big coil. And now I'm going to transfer this to my fermenter. Now, um, I don't have a spout, so I need to pick this up and pour this. So if I spill this, my entire day's worth of hard work is totally wasted. And it's been a long day because it's 7 o'clock at night now and I've been going at this all day if you haven't seen from the uh, darkness in the video here. So what I'm going to try and do is pour it through this screen here, just a strainer, to kind of strain off some of the sediment that was underneath when I boiled earlier. So let's give this a go. My spout is shut off down there. And I'm going to pour it through here. Now you want to try and aerate this because by aerating it, it actually helps the yeast uh, during um, during the production of the alcohol. So sometimes you'll get a little clog, which is okay. I have my sanitized spoon over here, and you'll just need to kind of work it through. This is a, this is a good time if you have a helping hand to help you. But while I'm doing this, I'm going to pause the video and then I will come back for the pitching of the yeast, which is the final step in the process before fermentation. Okay, so here it is. <laughs> it's even darker now than it was before. Uh, this is the final step. Everything has been done. The wort has been chilled down to 74 degrees, which is sufficient. 
Um, this is the yeast I'm using. This type of yeast you just place on top of um, your chilled wort here and the yeast will activate itself. I've used uh, liquid yeast in the past that's been in a test tube. I've used ones that are in smack packs that you hit and they activate themselves. Um, and the person I got this from, where I get my grains from, tells me this is just as good if not better. And it's a little bit cheaper too. Um, I think it's from France. Anyway, um, it's, uh, it's, it's the right kind for this particular recipe that I'm doing. Um, so all I need to do now is to pair it somehow. Let me get some scissors. That would be horrible if I ripped this open and yeast went flying everywhere and I had nothing. I'm too close to a uh, fail now. So, okay, so here we go. So yeast are like little, it's like white dust. It doesn't smell like anything. Anyway, so um, when I poured it in here, I filtered it. Um, it was aerated a lot in the process of doing so. I have about five gallons left. What I'm going to do now is just sprinkle the yeast on top. And it's going to go to work. Now what's going to happen next is the yeast is going to eat the sugars that are contained in here. And that's what's going to create my alcohol. Now, I took my gravity before... Um, before I did this, and it measures it right in line with what the recipe states. Um, what I'm going to do next is, after this ferments, I'm going to measure it at the very end, take the difference in the before and after gravity. You can run it through a formula, and that will tell you where alcohol content should be. This should run at about 8.5% ABV. So, um, so far it looks like it's on track. What I'm going to do now is just get the lid, snap it on top. Make sure it's locked down nice and tight. You can hear the air popping out of this. Again, all sanitized. The next thing is to put in my airlock, which is right here. This allows the gases to escape um, while not letting any air in, which could potentially contaminate your fermentation. So what I need to do after I put this on is put a little bit of water on top of here. Uh, to keep the airlock out, or to keep the airlock working properly. Um, and that's pretty much it. Perfect. So all I'm going to do now is cap this. I'll come put water in there in a minute, but this concludes this um, little uh, lesson on the uh, all-grain Dogfish Head 90-Minute IPA clone. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, um, so I hope to do another one soon, but um, it's getting late. I need to clean this stuff up and uh, go to bed. So uh, thanks so much for watching, and I uh, hope to see you on my next video. Take care. Bye. Happy brewing. Thank you.